Do I have to show you my papers? No, no, no. No, I'm all right. Can I pass? He can pass. <laughs> Beach recovery vehicle for landing craft and vehicles. Then you have the Royal Engineers version. Right. When we had a huge army on the Rhine, so these could swim, but we also put the ramps into the riverbeds to get the vehicles out. Yeah, of so they could dig a slope into the water. Yeah. Well, there's an SLR, SLR there. Yeah. 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 and left me and I'm on my own. That's the way you see it. Do you want to come and have a look? So we are portraying 1940s Normandy. So we're a mass unit, so we're an American medical unit. So 1940s, so pre-Korea in 1950s when helicopters came. So you have to imagine that the guys who were on the front line were probably being about four miles away from where we set our hospital station up and they're going to be brought to us in trucks. So the trucks are going to be coming along and bouncing them and their injuries are going to compound, which is why in the 1950s the helicopters were brought in yeah. and therefore right. the mass unit was either taken to where we needed to be or the injuries came to us via helicopter. Right. Okay. So they would have come in, they would have been assessed in triage. As you can see, we have just had a battle and I haven't had time to clear up. The guys have just gone to get my next batch of people, the medics have gone with them to see what they can do on the support vehicles. So if you come through here, this is triage. A bit of a mess from what happened before. They will be assessed in triage and then if need be, they will be operated on. So the operating theatres would have been really crude. They would probably have been a lot bigger than this, but they would have been crude. So they would just be doing what they would do. They would normally be about four doctors right with a, their specialities so you might have people that specialize in brains special people that specialize in limbs hopefully you would have an assortment of the right people right so they would be in here we would probably have a morgue attached to our hospital so that would probably be in the tent next to it obviously it's going to be bigger yeah so we'd like to try and find out where our casualties are coming and when they're coming in so we would have radio station so as right. long as signals were okay the radio would radio into us and let us know what was coming 
so you would be able to at least prepare a little bit for what was coming in. You would never know. One would hope, but you would yeah. never know. Now, we've got triage down there, we've got triage here. We would have probably had three or four, maybe five triage stations, depending on how many mass units were together. So triage would have been here again. And that's a little bit of a hospital ward that would have gone on either prior to operations, after operations, or patching the guys up ready to go back. Fantastic, you've so done a with, great job. Here. With every medical unit, we would hope to have a small infantry of soldiers. So these two groups work together. So if you look through the, I'll pull it apart so you can see any camera. These guys in their trench would be looking after us. So obviously medics are looking after us. So we'd have so they're them looking after our front. Right. We'd have somebody looking after our back. Right. Right. Because for every medic that died, you're then going to lose six or seven. Absolutely. So you're a valuable asset. So you we had to be valuable, protected. But we weren't combating. Yeah. So we would then have our medical supplies supplied to us in similar boxes to these, which you have down here, which were, if we needed to pick up and run, pack our stuff up and go in our trucks, we could pick everything up and go. Pack the tents down. So, to wherever we needed to be. Or if it was getting too hot here, you could clear out pretty quickly, yeah. basically. Yeah. And Brilliant. we would take the steer with the guys that side, telling yeah. us we have to go. So we yeah. go. Because it sounds like it's getting a bit yeah, close now, doesn't it? Yeah, getting a bit close now, and I think I've got more guys coming in. Maybe time to go. <laughs> Listen, thanks very much That's for that. Right. about <laughs> nice to see you're feeding people under fire <laughs> So this is, would you call this a field kitchen? Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, variously, the Germans tend to call them goulash, cannon. Okay. Yes. And, and these are bain maries, basically. The the big ones are the big ones are double skinned with water and glycerin in. All oh, right. So right. you can't scoop the food. These ones are just single skin. And, right. Um, I think they're twenty or twenty-five. Yeah. Fire down yeah. here, and you just yeah. gently feed it every now and then with a couple of little logs. Yeah, it doesn't need much. Once they're boiling, uh, once they're boiling, they take tiny, tiny amounts. But it's it's like a steam train if you want to be. Yeah, you, you just keep. But you've got to be keeping an eye on it all the time. Yeah. I mean, I've never yeah. tried it with coal. I run the sawmill, so I've always got always got wood. It always smells better anyway, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I, I, I've got it because it was wood fired and interesting. It's not just the value. Yeah. Um, so, what's on the go in here? We are on the herbs and zuppa, pea and, pea and speck, pea and bacon soup. All oh, right. Um, plenty of onions, green split peas, some marifats because I've cleaned out the county of split peas. Uh, and then I'm going to be heating bock burst in the water at the back. Uh, I should really cook some potatoes and mash them in there, but that's not going to happen. Um, yeah, that's a lot deeper than you than I thought. That um, they're fair old things. They're yeah. nowhere to clean out because they've got this little hole. So they go in a wow. far way. I've put a plate in. I put that baffle plate in to stop the flames. Right. Really so scorching. Not, so, yeah. So it, to protect it a bit, but the heat's there. That's yeah. what the main thing, isn't it? No, no, um, but I'm, I'm struggling today to get these to boil properly. Um, should get a bit more wood in and mm. I think back on. Might be diesel time actually. Yeah, diesel. <laughs> I've got a little diesel. I've got a little diesel dripper just to just to light. Like right, right. So a little bit of a turbo boost basically. I think it might be required yeah. just to just to bring them up on song. Excellent. Get them on full chat. Yes, it was. Shit, I'm going to take my dress. That's going to be a knotty string. Yeah. Because we've got to get that right. That's what. Yeah, <laughs> 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 
going across there, you see it's got a slack rule. It's what they call a, we call it a slack rule, G. When it's before they had the tubular press front grill, they were actually just steel strips. Right, what, what I'd like to get now, if he comes, the next time he comes around. And those horses that you use around all the horses. But what, well, one experiment goes, and this is a Nuffield prototype G. The original bin was a Willis. Tarakiwa, that was the name, because they ran out of pinkies for the first golf ball. Uh -huh. They got some 90s, uh -huh. but they found that were new and converted them quicker. And that's what they called the, uh, the 90s. So these were domestic 90s that they converted? In military storage, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Landing gear, sir. Because he got heavier, 
they built this one from scrap airplane parts from Spitfire they came down and yeah today I will uh, invite someone from the public again to help us out it up I like some people that are interested I see they are pointed and no pain in the way so you can contact me we are going to start it up. <laughs> I will give you some hearing protection because it's going to be very, very loud. Do you have to Yes. Okay, before we go and start it, uh, the throttle, if you pull it too fast uh, towards you, it will cut off. So I will hold it for a second, so I know you won't pull it too hard because it will cut off and it's not good for the engine. Okay. So if you do it a bit slowly, then you can do it on your own if you want. Okay? Right. Well, first we start with the main power, this, this switch. Right. You have to turn it a bit, a bit forward to the right. Hold on a Yes. The light will come on. It says there's power. Second, we do the ignition. Right. You flip it to the right. Yeah. The third one is uh, fuel pumps. Right. You flip that one down. Yes. Then you get the booster. I will operate that. Right. When I flick this one down, you are going to push this button. Okay. When the engine fires up, yeah. you're gonna get loose of that one. Right. I got here. Yes. Okay. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Here we go.